right and then next is law of supply is not applicable as supply of commodity rises or falls due to factor other than price right so this this is the reason then over here see whenever the uh, there are two changes one is one will be a movement and one will be a shift right or rotation you can say so air movement along the supply curve will be there it can be upward or right downward it will be a shift right so right now uh, like sayed as you are new so you won't be aware like i'll just tell you in detail don't worry uh, others i i hope you people are aware because in ppc we did a lot a movement and what a shift right so shift is basically for example over here you can see right shift is basically like over this was your supply curve right and from this you are shifting to this one when you shift something right shift means like for example you are uh, uh, residing somewhere else and now you shifted to some other place you were in india now you shifted to ua or saudi so that means you totally shift right but rotation is basically or you can say movement is basically from here from first floor to second floor you shifted like this okay so when there will be change due to sub a price so there will always be a movement it will be upward or downward or this is also known as you can say rotation okay but when the factors other than price will be affecting your supply it will be a rightward shift or the leftward shift so this will be the schedule over here you can see that the price is increasing so quantity supply is also increasing price is falling quantity supply is falling here price is constant but supply is increasing right here price is constant but supply is decreasing okay so over here this is the thing from this x to x1 okay this is basically the uh, you can say upward movement so when your supply will increase that is known as upward movement it is because of price that's why it is a movement otherwise it would have a rightward or leftward shift right but over here your supply is this and now it is falling to this right it is downward movement why because it is due to price but here your supply is increasing from this to this right so it is a rightward shift and over here your supply is decreasing from this to this this one so this is a leftward shift clear yes ma'am others yes ma'am oh yes ma'am okay so you will uh, write from here law of supply third point law of supply is applicable and this 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 then you will draw schedule and then the graph clear yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. yes, ma
Ma'am, finish. Okay, others done. Yes, ma'am. Oh. I hope everyone is done, right? Okay. Now you will draw the graph like this. Okay. Let me just. Ma'am, in the downward movement graph, how can we identify it's a downward movement? You can see this is your X, right? And this is coming yes. down, right? Your price was this and your quantity was this, right? So, for example, it is 3. Okay? It is 3 and this is 2, right? So, you can yes. see that from 3, now it's on 2, right? So yes. from this to this, it is shifting. And also for price, it was two and now it is one, right? So earlier price was two and your quantity supply was three. Now your price is one and your quantity supply is two. So they both are coming down. So it is a downward movement. Clear? Okay, ma'am.
मैम कंप्लीटेड everyone done yes ma'am the okay, girls yes okay so now basically see there are causes for rightward shift and the leftward shift okay so see remember one thing why i have not mentioned over here causes of upward movement or downward movement who can tell me what can be the causes of upward movement and upward movement what can be the causes who will tell me when upward movement take place when it's a change in price yes so what will be the cause here everything is due to price yes so what will be there if it is moving upward so what will be the cause dash in price increase in price yes so that's why i have not mentioned causes of you know movement i have only mentioned causes of shift why because movement only takes place due to price no other factor right so movement if it is upward movement right then it is due to increase in price if it is downward movement then it is due to decrease in price okay but for you know rightward shift and leftward shift in the supply curve you have different factors right like improvement in technology increase in subsidy decrease in taxation increase in price of complementary goods decrease in price of supplementary good decrease in price of input increase in number of firms these are the reason that leads to cause of rightward shift now coming to leftward everything will be opposite it was improvement in technology it is deterioration in technology decrease in subsidy increase in taxation decrease in price of complementary good increase in price of supplementary good increase in price of input and decrease in number of firms okay but in case if in question it comes what are the causes for movement you can write it down inside and uh, make a note like this and write over there increase causes for you can say upward movement okay causes for up movement upward movement is basically increase in price right and causes for downward movement d1 is decrease in price clear and then you will write hashtag causes of rightward shift in the supply curve all this point causes of leftward shift in the supply curve all this point clear yes ma'am yes,
ma'am done ओके मैम डन
Girls, you are also done? Okay. Everyone, right? Okay. So, let's just start with the next topic, which is your PED. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> you all can see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, basically, we are going to start with the next topic, which is price elasticity of the supply. So, over from here onwards, today we'll be doing the uh, theory portion, and tomorrow in our next class, we'll be doing the numerical portion. Okay. Today, we'll understand what the formulas are and, you know, how we uh, make a formulas and how we put these formulas like this. And then in our next class, we'll solve numericals for this chapter. So first of all is price elasticity of supply. So ma'am, what is this price elasticity of the supply? So see, it refers to percentage change in quantity supplied of a commodity due to percentage change in price. See, when price will change, only then your supply will be changing, right? So because of cha percentage change in price, your quantity change in supply will be there, right? So it refers to percentage change in quantity supply of a commodity due to percentage change in price. Okay, or the second definition is it is the measurement of degree of response of quantity supply due to change in its price. Okay, this is what. Then formulas are there, right? So ma'am, what are those formulas basically? So formula are basically, this is PES, price elasticity of supply. It is first formula is percentage change in supply and percentage change in price. This is your first formula. And this one, is your second formula, okay? Which is, this triangle is basically delta QS, quantity supply divided by delta P and PQS, okay? This is the, these are the things. This is your second formula. So now you will be like, ma'am, why there are two formulas? So see, if you have to find percentage change in supply, so this is the formula to find percentage change in supply. It is, this triangle is delta QS, QS multiplied by 100, and this is delta P divided by P multiplied by 100. This is your, in order to find the percentage change in price, right? Now, see, for example, earlier your uh, price was 10 rupees or 1 rupees. Now your price is 2 rupees, right? So if I will ask you what is P, this is your P, right? And this is your P1, okay? And if I'll ask you what is delta P, right? So delta P is P1 minus P. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Delta P is basically, delta means how much you are changing. Like what was your new, what is your new amount and what was your prop, like old amount. So that will be your delta P. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, right now don't worry that ma'am, what is this? Just write down the formulas for today. And tomorrow, in, like from next class onwards, when we will do it with the help of numericals, you will get to know more about. Okay, so this is A and B. And then like, for example, this is A and this is B. So instead of writing percentage change in supply and percentage change in price, you will write this formula and this formula. So when you will sub solve this, see 100 and 100 got deducted, right? What left? This will go up. So it will be multiply P and delta P, right? So this will be your thing and this is how. So if you have to found delta QS, it will be QS1 minus Q. And if I will ask you to find delta P, it is P1 minus P like this. Okay. These two formulas you have to write. Delta P is change in price. P1 is new price. P is the original price. Delta QS is change in supply. QS1 is new supply. QS is original supply. This is what. So for time being, what you are going to do, you are just going to write it down. Right? Because you won't be getting it right now. Just write the formulas. Uh, this is for Sayyid especially because girls has already done the question. So it will be easy for them. But Sayyid, this is new for you. So right now, just write down the formula. Focus on the formula. And try to learn these formulas. Right? In our next class, when we will be doing the numerical. So if you have, if you already are, if you are aware of the formulas, it's very easy for you to relate the things. Right? Okay, ma'am. So you'll write a chap just write chapter price elasticity of supply and then these two definitions, formulas, girls, you already know how to write. 
this, this, and this, and this. Clear? Yes, no. And those who missed the class for price elasticity in numerical portion of demand, make sure that you are not going to miss the next class because if you will miss this class as well, it will be very difficult because two chapters are related and everything is same. Right? So, don't miss the next class. Those who missed the class and you were not aware of the numerical, so don't miss the next class. I'm done.
finish. Ma'am, done. Girls, done. Okay. So now coming to next thing, basically over here we are talking about price elasticity. So you know, sometimes we check our uh, like for example, uh, we uh, like we are purchasing a rubber band. Okay, over there we check it how elastic it is, right? For example, when we uh, you know purchase pants or something we check how elastic like yoga pants and all that so we check how elastic they are how you know stretchable they are right so similarly like there can be uh, different degrees for elasticity right for example someone which is basically zero you no matter how hard you try it will not stretch right it will because it is perfectly inelastic which is es that means your es is zero that means it is perfectly inelastic Sometimes it can be like, okay, like there is a range that till one centimeter, it can be stretched. But some pants are like, you are only able to stretch it less than one centimeter, right? So they are less than unitary supply, okay? Then some uh, pants are there that you can stretch it till one centimeter. So they are unitary elastic, okay? Uh, okay, unitary supply, not in unitary elastic, okay? And then over here, more than unitary elastic supply. Clear? And then perfectly elastic. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, this is these are basically the degree. Now, ma'am, what is this? So, when your QS does not change at all due to change in price. So, due to, because you know that your QS will change due to price. So, your price is changing, but your QS is not. Your quantity supply is not changing. So, that means it is perfectly inelastic. 
no matter what you do, your QS will not change. Over here, you can see price is increasing, but QS is not increasing. So in that case, see, QS will QS is here and it will always remain here, right? But price is increasing, right? But QS is not increasing or decreasing. It is straight away. When your ES, it is means that it is less than this. So you can say when the percentage change in QS is less than percentage change in price. So your at that time it is like this, okay? And then when your ES is this, so the percentage change in QS is equals to percentage change in price. So at the time it is somewhere like this. It is more steeper. It is more downward. Then. When percentage change in uh, QS is more than the unitary supply, okay? This is what? Uh, like this and this. When QS of a commodity is infinite at the prevailing price. So over here, it is like it is keep on changing. The price is not changing, but your quantity supply is keep on increasing, right? So that time it is like this. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you will make a you will write hashtag degree of supply elasticity of demand okay sorry it is price elasticity of supply clear yes ma'am and you will write degree define schedule and graph you will make it like this second third and fourth and fifth clear okay
I'm done. I'm done.
I'm done. Okay, others also done? Yes, teacher. Okay. Now, coming to this. Okay. So, basically, what is this, ma'am? This is the graph. Okay, which usually we have done. So, no need to draw this. Now, these are the factors that affect the supply. Okay. So, let's just see one by one what are the factors, basically. So, factors affecting price elasticity of the supply. So, first is Nature of commodity, time period, technique of production, natural constraint, risk taking, nature of input use and cost of production. One by one, we will understand what are these and after that we will understand like C. If these are the factor, then what happens? Okay. So nature of the commodity, whether the good which you are taking or you are producing is durable or perceivable, like uh, just temporary one. Okay. So if your good is durable, then you will change the supply. Okay. But if it will, like it is basically, you can say like you can a small thing and you know, not that much, like it is temporary. So you will not change your supply because it doesn't make a difference. Right. But coming to time period, if you are getting longer period of time, you will change, you will change your supply. Right. But if the time period is very short or short, then you will not change your supply. Right. But technique of production, if you are using simple technique, you can easily change it, right? But if you are using complex technique, it's very difficult for you to change the technique, right? Because if you will purchase some other technique, again, you have to understand all this. So it will be difficult. So you will not, right? Then natural constraint means earthquake and all that, the natural climates and all that. So if there is no natural constraint, then you will change it. But yeah, if the chances are there that there can be a natural constraint, then you will not change it, right? For example, over here, it's like you are planning to go out, right? But if you are feeling like that, uh, like today the, uh, you know, climate is going to be okay or uh, today the, uh, you know, uh, today the day will be brighter and everything, weather is quite good. So you will you know, change the things accordingly. You can change your plans and everything, right? But the, but for example, over there, you feel like that, yes, there can be the problem, then you will not change it, right? According to your mode, according to the atmosphere, you will be responding. Risk taking. When risk taking is available, then you will change it. If you feel like that, okay, taking risk is okay with you, you can. But if you don't want to take risk, right, then you will not change your supply, right? Then nature of input. If you are common, if you are using the commonly used product to make, for example, you are baking a, you can say a cake, and you are using the common ingredients like sugar, choco, and all that. So you can easily change your supply, right? One kg, two kg, three kg, four kg, according to you. But for example, if the products, the input which you are using to make your product, if they are difficult to available, like if they are, it is very difficult to find them, then you will not change your production, right? If you are producing one kg cake, you will only bake 1 kg cake, right? Then cost of production. If it is law, uh, law of diminishing, less cost is there, so you can easily change it. But if law of increasing cost, you, you have to pay more and more cost, then you will not change it. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Girls? Okay. So what you will do, you will take the screenshot for this, okay? And uh, like after the class, you will just make it the table like this and you will write it down. And in our next class, just learn the formulas. Come, like once you're done with the things, only then, like it's not compulsory to learn all the things, but for formula, I'm asking you to learn that so that in the next class, when we practice numerical, it will be easy for you. Okay? Okay, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Take the screenshot for this factor. Uh, wait. Wait. 